Welcome all my Washington brethren and sisters. I am your man and Washington football team fan, Lou. Thank you for joining me here on the Washington Football Report Live. Continue training camp coverage here on the Louis T Network. I, of course, am your set man, Louis T. Thank you for joining me. Hat to the bat. Wine intact. It's Sunday. You know how we do it here on the Louis T Network on Sundays. We cool it, man. And today was a big day at practice. We did not do a video yesterday. Practice was closed off to the media, so I decided to take the day off from the, the coverage, even though they did have practice yesterday. Uh, they were in helmet and shells. Um, not a lot of big news coming out of practice yesterday, and obviously without the beat reporters being on site because of all the rain that uh, the area had on Friday night, um, they were in the bubble, so not really much to gather there, even though some things took place. Alex Smith practiced uh, for the first time in 11-on-11 drills. Uh, obviously, helmet and shell, so no contact, but uh, he was out there for uh, three plays, and uh, th that was a big um, thing coming out of practice on Saturday. But the biggest thing coming out of practice on Saturday was the fact that Rivera said Sunday's practice was going to be massive. So, you know, the media members were really excited about that. And I was excited to see what would happen. They put a lot of guys in some situations. And, and I told you guys on Thursday night on the live stream that these next, these next practices, this next week of practice is going to be massive because they've got to cut the rosters down to 53 by Saturday at 4 p.m. I believe it is uh, 4 or 5 o'clock. Usually the league operates at, at 4 o'clock. So whatever the case may be, these next set of practices over the span of the next seven days, and, and that was coming from Thursday night, now we're down to the next five days or so, are going to be massive for a lot of guys. And I thought there were some really interesting things that Rivera said today, but I want to go back to what he said yesterday first before we get to what happened today. And then we'll get into practice and things of that nature. I uh, also want to remind you guys, got merch at uh, the LouisTNetwork.net on the site. Uh, also, down in the description, you can find um, the link to the merch on the site. Or you can go directly to the manufacturer, the Print Champs, which, like I said, he's doing a fantastic job with all of the merch. So if you haven't had a chance to, check that out. Also, Louis T Network exclusives, all of the things that we're doing on the channel uh, this year for the upcoming season, as you all know, winners and losers, that's a, a, a league that we do. Also have the Soul Survivor pool and uh, the weekly pick em pool. So check all of that stuff out. It's on the site. Also did a video kind of updating you on that. And we'll do more uh, of that as time progresses. But um, Rivera yesterday talked about uh, a number of things. I just want to get to some of the critical points that I took notes on. Uh, Keith Ishmael has been playing everywhere. Rivera, one of the things he talked about uh, when he first took this job was positional flexibility. You know, he loves guys that can do multiple things. Uh, it saves you space on the roster. Um, and the more a guy can do, the more valuable they become. And Keith Ishmael, remember, was drafted as a center, but a guy that also had experience at uh, um, San Diego State playing uh, guard as well, but he was more of a center than a guard. Um, he's been taking reps at all three interior offensive linemen positions. So that's strengthening his grip on a roster spot. Uh, the more you can do, the more valuable you become. So Keith Ishmael making a, a case to make this football team. And, and Rivera talked about his positional flexibility. He talked about having no fullback. And someone brought up the, the question about this team not having a fullback. And that's something that Rivera had. And I talked about this about a month and a half ago or so. Uh, on the uh, live stream about Rivera having a fullback. And it was interesting that they did not have anyone in that role per se. And he said, look, we did have a guy, uh, but he opted to not, uh, you know, play on the team this year. And, and so um, he's like, we decided at the time once, you know, we saw what the position looked like in terms of the free agent market, we weren't really all that impressed with what was available. So we just decided we're just going to roll with the tight ends and, you know, just have those guys be a little bit of uh, versatile and be able to play multiple positions. And uh, we we'll think we'll be fine there. So he talked about the uh, state of the fullback position and the lack thereof on this particular roster. He also talked about Wes Schweitzer and he said, and this is going to lead me into another point 
that I thought was a, a point of emphasis by Rivera yesterday. He talked about Wes Schweitzer, who I told you guys came back to practice for the first time on Friday. And he talked about Wes Schweitzer um, missing a ton of time, which he has due to injury. But he said, look, Wes is a veteran. We know what this guy is capable of, which is why we went out and signed him in free agency. So he does have a leg up on some of the other guys that are young that may have been practicing every single day, but we aren't really sure what we're going to get out of those guys. We know what Wes Schweitzer brings to the table as a veteran and a guy who has done this in the league. So uh, we trust Wes. And I, what he's essentially telling us without saying it is Wes Schweitzer is going to be on this roster. Now, I've looked at 53-man rosters that have been projected by people who don't have Wes Schweitzer on the roster because he's missed so much time in camp. And what Rivera is essentially telling you is, hey, Wes is good not having participated in over a week and a half of camp. He's straight. We know what we're getting out of him. We signed him and brought him here for a reason. And as long as his injury isn't lingering and he's back at camp now, he's going to make this football team is essentially what Ron told us without actually saying it. And so I want to take it a step further. And I want to talk about vets over the youngins. Because him talking about Wes Schweitzer, and then he answered another question later on in his presser from yesterday, where he kind of talked about the young guys versus the vets. And how when you're making those last bit of decisions towards the roster, in a situation like this year where there were no OTAs, there were no minis, it's harder to go with the young guy over the veteran. Now, he's going to have a bunch of young guys over veterans at positions where the young guys are just better. All right, And he stated that, look, you know, it's never a situation where you're going to just go with a veteran just because he's a veteran. If the guy is better, you're going to go with that guy. However, when you get to the back end of the roster and you start, you know, splitting hairs and you start looking at certain situations, you're more inclined, Rivera said, to go with the guy that has experience, that's done it before. Now, look, got to be able to help on special teams. He made sure he was very clear about that. Got to be able to contribute on special teams. But if all things are equal and you've got a guy that really hasn't done it in the league versus a guy that has you're more inclined to go with the guy that has. So he's telling you, and, and this is no secret to you guys. I told you that a Panthers fan told me Ron has always leaned towards the veteran players in this league over the young guys. That's always been his move. If you've played for him or he feels like you're a veteran and you get it, he's usually going to give you the benefit over, of the doubt over a young guy that hasn't cut his teeth in the league yet. So what I'm telling you is, I'm still now where it's really going to come down to is Isaiah Wright, Cam Sims and Trey Quinn. I, I, I said this a while back, even when Kelvin Harmon was healthy, I felt like it was three receivers for two spots. Now, you know, the, the, the receivers might have changed since then, you know, but at the end of the day, I think it's two receivers for three spots or uh, three receivers for two spots. And. I really feel like Isaiah Wright, unless they absolutely love this guy on specials, absolutely love him, I think he's the odd man out. I'm sticking steadfast to that because of what I just referenced, the veteran presence of a Trey Quinn who's been in the league multiple years now, can help you on special teams. And then you look at Cam Sims, who has been one of the most impressive wide receivers in camp and had another strong day today. We'll talk about that here in a second. But I think he has made a name for himself in camp, and I think he has locked up a roster spot. I, I really feel like Isaiah Wright, although he's done some good things, and I think they see promise in him. He's a young player, and I think they feel like they can sneak him on to the practice squad because of the lack of exposure with no preseason and, and feel like they'll be fine, whereas if they try – to release Trey Quinn, they probably will not get him back. And I think they understand that. And so I think that's why I'm leaning towards Trey Quinn making this roster and Isaiah Wright not making this roster, but we will see. But I, I did want to mention Rivera talking about taking veterans over young guys that haven't proven themselves in this league. I think that's something that you have to take into consideration when you start talking about the back end of this roster. So now, we fast forward to today, and this was a really in, in important practice 
you know, Ron Rivera talked about the importance of this practice yesterday and how they were going to try to start to see some things moving forward. And this practice was pretty much the signaling of them really honing in on specific details of this roster and giving guys an opportunity to play with the ones so that they can really assess how good these guys can play. So um, this practice was major. And there were a couple of big takeaways. And I want to start with the starting positions of some positions that we had talked about um, on various videos. We weren't quite sure about who was starting where, what this guy was going to do. And so I want to talk about um, a couple of positions. Linebacker. Uh, Cole Holcomb started at linebacker. So did KPL and Thomas Davis. Those are your three starting backers today. So uh, when you talk about uh, the versatility that uh, Holcomb and Davis bring, that's why they like those guys in the starting lineup because they are versatile enough to play uh, just about anywhere at the linebacker position. I told you that KPL was going to start at strong side linebacker. They love him. They've been touting him. They've been talking him up. And he's been getting a ton of work, excuse me. And I figured he was going to be in a starting lineup. So that's pretty much what it looks like at linebacker right now in terms of starting. You've got Davis, you've got Holcomb, you've got KPL. So that's what the group looks like for the starters. Um, and then I think coming off the bench, you're going to have Sean Deion Hamilton. You're going to have uh, John Bostic. And you're going to have... Um, I feel like I'm missing somebody. Because I, I, I'm not sure about Ruben Foster. You know, they may ultimately go in a different direction. They may actually go with the young and Kalik Hudson out of Michigan as that other linebacker. It, it's really hard to say because um, I, I told you that there hasn't been a lot of improvement from Reuben Foster to this point. They, they may start him on the pup list. You know, um, they may, they may not. We'll see. Um, it, it'll be interesting to see, you know, that, that last linebacker spot is pretty intriguing because they do have the option to – to start, you know, Ruben Foster off uh, on the on the pup list and, and bring him back at a later date and time and, and just allow him to heal up and, and he'll still be able to practice and things of that nature. But um, it, it, I think it, there are some interesting things that they may be able to do with the roster, uh, especially with this whole COVID situation and, and, and all these roster exempts that they're doing. Um, they may be able to do something with Ruben where he doesn't count against the, the, the number of players on the roster and not have him be active. But we'll see. But... Um, at the cornerback position, I thought this was really interesting today. Um, you got Jimmy Moreland starting opposite of Ronald Darby at corner. Now, don't read too much into that. Kendall Fuller was not practicing today. Uh, they continue to just want to ease him into things. Remember, he got nicked up the other day. Um, another guy that did not practice today is Antonio uh, Gandy Golden, of course. The Gandy man, A-G-G. -G. Uh, he got nicked up three days ago, hasn't practiced since. So that's another guy that's kind of been um, monitored very closely. So uh, Kendall Fuller would obviously be in there if you're starting off a game. Uh, I, I, right now, uh, coincidentally enough, I think Ronald Darby started. Uh, now, Fab Moreau, I think, was going to start. But the injury to Fab Moreau, I think, has kind of derailed that train a bit. And ultimately, Fat Moreau may get healthy and they may, you know, insert him, reinsert him back into the starting lineup. Uh, and Rivera has talked really, you know, talked up a Fat Moreau a, a ton about how he's progressed well and done some good things. But the injury really slowed the momentum that he was building. And I think Darby has been extremely strong this camp. When you talk to anybody, they'll tell you Darby's had one of the better camps of any of the DBs. So really... I'm looking at the cornerback position now, and I'm thinking it's Fuller on one side. You get Darby on the other side. And Jimmy Moreland is a guy that um, today in practice, he's been playing everywhere, but f specifically with the ones. Um, he started out the game out wide uh, across from Darby. And then on the first third down snap, um, Fat Moreau comes in. Remember, they, they, this is his first practice back, you know, really working his way back. He comes in. Um, and goes out wide, and, and Jimmy slides into the nickel. So that was an interesting look there. Again, um, Fuller can play the nickel. Fuller can play out wide. So once he comes back, that'll change a, a little bit of that dynamic. Um, and, and, you know, Ramo, uh, Foster, um, Foster, Fabian Moreau is a guy that strictly outside at this point. You know, we saw him in the slot. We did not like what we saw. I don't think that's something he's really comfortable doing. Um, so Fab Moreau, to me, is a guy you play out wide. 
they've got so much and and, and Rivera's talked about this. I, I believe it when I see it. Okay. But Rivera's talked about the amount of depth and the quality of depth he's got in the secondary. He even talked about that today with the safety position, and we'll talk about that in a second. But I just thought that was interesting, Fat Moreau coming in, playing out wide on third down, and, and Jimmy Moreland, the people's corner, sliding inside to the nickel. Um, that's something to look out for, you know, moving forward. And then on, on the defensive line, Sweat and Young were your starters. So, look, that's to me what it's going to be week one, come Philadelphia Eagles, September 13th. Uh, Sweat on one side, Chase Young on the other side. Uh, I think you're still going to get the Bama wall on the inside when it's all said and done. Maybe Ioannidis starts. I wouldn't have a problem with that whatsoever. Uh, so, it, it, But, we, you know, there was a lot made of, oh, my God, Ryan Kerrigan starting on one side, Sweat's on the other side. And this was before Young had the hip flexor. Um, so, you know, everybody was talking about, oh, whoa, 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 what's going on there? And then, you know, inside it was Jonathan Allen and, and Ioannidis. Look. At the end of the day, I told you, it really doesn't matter who starts, even though we want Young out there as much as possible. All these guys are going to play. Kerrigan's going to play. Ryan Anderson's going to play. Um, you know, Tim Settle's going to play. Like, we're going to see these guys rotating in and out of the lineup. Whomever's not getting in there to start the game, they're going to be in there quite a bit. So I wouldn't really uh, put too much stock into that. But um, today, the decision-making by the quarterbacks – Rivera highlighted that, said they had a really strong day. Dwayne Haskins himself said he had a really good day today. And by all accounts, uh, the quarterback play was at, at a relatively high level today. So one of those days where you feel like the offense outshined the defense. Uh, Dwayne Haskins, by one account, was 9 of 14 on third downs today. Uh, and, and eight of those completions on third downs resulted in a first down or a touchdown. And one uh, fourth down uh, conversion he had on fourth and goal, he was able to throw a touchdown pass. And on a third and goal, he was able to run for a touchdown. So uh, Dwayne was exceptionally sharp today in camp. And I told you, he's starting to really get into a rhythm get a really good feel for the players around him. He had a nice touchdown pass to Trey Quinn today. Also had uh, some good completions to Cam Sims. So really strong day by the offense um, and another day. And we're starting to stack these good days on top of each other in terms of Dwayne and his mastery of this offense and what they're asking him to do. As I've mentioned, it's only a matter of time before he is announced as the starting quarterback for the upcoming season. Alex Smith, as we talked about, did practice yesterday. In 11 on 11 drills, helmets and shells did not participate today. It was a full contact practice, so he was not um, participating today. So, again, they're bringing him along slowly, but uh, it, it, he's taken drastic steps in this um, uh, process, in his journey back, but he's still a ways away from getting back onto the football field, which I, I still contend will never happen. But uh, he's come one hell of a, a long way to get to where he is right now. But... When you look at what Rivera had to say about practice today, again, more interesting tidbits from him. Uh, he, Jonathan Allen got injured today. Doesn't seem serious. Sounds like his ankle was rolled up on, maybe a knee injury, but it's not serious. He actually wanted to get back into practice, uh, was begging his way in. The, the trainers took his helmet so he couldn't go back into practice. So sounds like Jonathan Allen's going to be just fine, but it wouldn't shock me if he missed a couple of days of practice. And we all know what he's capable of, so no need in rushing him back. It's practice. So I assume that we will not see Jonathan Allen for the next couple of days uh, at practice uh, and, and they will allow and, and Rivera talked about allowing injuries to heal, which is why we haven't seen Kendall Fuller, which is why they kept Chase Young out of practice as many days as they did, why they kept Wes Schweitzer out of practice as many days as they did, and, and why Sadiq Charles still hasn't been on the practice field to this point. They want to make sure that these guys are are fully healthy. They do not want these injuries lingering and, and, and manifesting themselves um, down the road. So uh, I, I expect to not see Jonathan Allen practicing probably the next few days. Same thing with Fab Moreau and how they brought him back uh, very slowly to make sure that he was okay. Um, he talked about um, seven or eight roster spots that are unspoken for at this point, unaccounted for, that they're still mulling over some decisions. So, you know, they have pretty much narrowed this thing down to the final seven or eight guys. They've got about 45, 46 guys made up in their mind on this roster. And so they've done a really good job because I wasn't sure if they knew uh, quite what they were looking at yet 
but they've they've whittled this thing down and, and this is where you would be at this point of the year you would be going into that final preseason game and we would be talking about maybe five or six roster spots that weren't spoken for and so they've pretty much narrowed it down to the same thing so they've got it kind of narrowed down where they want to have it and now really this week is going to tell the story you know there you got to step up opportunities are going to be presented to some of these guys on the back end of the roster They've got to step up and seize the opportunity. And Rivera even talked about guys seizing the opportunity. So it's imperative that some of these guys step up and take advantage of these reps that they're getting, whether it be with the first, second, third team, or as he talked about today, today was a massive day for special teams. And I can't begin to explain to you how important special teams is going to be on this football team this year in terms of making the roster. So if, you know, I talked about Isaiah Wright earlier. If he's going to make this football team, more likely than not, it's going to be because of what he does on special teams, not because of what he brings to the table offensively. That's an added benefit. They really want to see what you can do on special teams. A guy like Kalik Hudson, who I just brought up, who's supposed to be a massive special teams player when they drafted him, this is his opportunity to prove not only can he help on defense, but more specifically, what can you do for us on special teams? Rivera talked candidly about how he's not going to leave his special teams coordinator, uh, Matt Kazer, out to dry with not having enough talent. He's had Matt Kazer uh, make a list of all the players and put them in sequential order as to the importance of these guys being on the roster. How good are these guys on special teams? And we'll see how many of those guys we can get for you. So he's not going to leave the special teams naked and bare. If you can help on special teams, you will make this football team on the back end of this roster. So it's going to be important that guys step up on special teams. And Rivera made that abundantly clear. Um, he talked about Sadiq Charles and he said it, he was a little dis he's been a little bit disappointed. A little bit disappointed in him not being able to practice. You know, he said he was one of the guys that we drafted and we earmarked as a guy that was going to come in and help us right away. And, you know, because of these injuries and him not being able to participate in practice, essentially the entire training camp, um, it's tough to really be able to put him in any kind of a position to help this football team right away. But that being said, it's not like he's getting cut or anything like that. He's going to make the football team. But, you know, you want guys on the roster that if in a pinch, they can help you right away. And Sadiq is in a position right now that he'll make the 53-man roster, but you could easily see him in a position where he's not active the first three weeks of the season until he gets himself back into um, a position where they feel like if need be, if called upon in the second quarter of a ball game or the third quarter of a ball game, he can step right in and help. I don't think he's going to be there. And he talked about the left tackle position and how they are platooning in uh, Jaron Christian and Cornelius Lucas to get those guys assimilated to first team reps. Obviously, J Jaron Christian has been taking the bulk of the first team reps, but Cornelius Lucas is another guy that has to take those first team reps because all it takes is one play and he'll be thrusted into the lineup and he'll have to be able to step in and give us something. So, um, uh, that's another guy that was getting a lot of first team reps today. They've been doing that a lot of recent uh, note, just putting guys into the first team and giving them opportunities to kind of gel and mesh a bit and, and get accustomed to being thrusted in because you just never know this league. It happens very quickly. So we'll see what happens uh, there. But he also talked about simulating different things with not having preseason games. Uh, the onus has been on the coaching staff to simulate uh, different game situations and one of those things is coming out of halftime we've talked about this as a fan base one of the things that was a pet peeve of ours with Jay Gruden here was the lack of energy coming out of the halftime break from this team you know there were a couple of things that really pissed us off with Jay one was the the lack of a fast start to seasons and another thing was lack of adjustments I wasn't the big lack of adjustments guy at halftime but I just I just hated the lack of energy coming out of the halftime break. I felt like we were always flat coming out of halftime. Rivera spoke to that and said, you know, we kind of simulated that at practice today. Gave him a little bit of a break, came back from the break. And he said he thought the team was flat coming out of that break. So that was something he emphasized at the end of practice. He got the whole team together and told them that the, the energy after that break simulating halftime wasn't good enough. We've got to be better. So, uh, again, Ron trying to instill all of these different characteristics into this team 
it's a process, but it's good to hear that he's doing some of the things that we as fans wanted to see done for quite some time. And that was one of the things that we definitely wanted to see. So them simulating that at practice today, I thought was big. And the fact that they did not respond the way that he wanted them to. And then he chastised them at the end of practice for that. I thought that was a good thing. But he said overall, it was a really good day of practice. They saw a lot of good things. Some young guys stepped up. He said he wants to watch the film to see who were the real standouts of practice. But they got a lot of things accomplished in today's practice. So Sounded like it was a massive practice, a lot done, but there are going to be more of these. Tomorrow, uh, they will be out at FedEx Field. Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit more of a relaxed practice, not as intense as today was. He said they're going to try to clean up some of the mistakes that were made in today's practice tomorrow. So not as much emphasis on, you know, competition, competition like it was today, uh, tomorrow. But uh, they will be out there getting after it again. And more likely than not, you'll hear from me as well.